Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anastasia. I'm a social media manager and mentor, and I help mompreneurs show up online more confidently through unique branding and intentional engagement. So today I'm going to be talking about how you can create content specifically for your audience. And I know this is a struggle. I know people are like, okay, I can create content, but I'm not too sure how to create it specifically for my audience, or I don't know how to get my audience to be attracted by my content so this is the video that I'm going to give you guys that will help you when you're thinking of ideas or thinking of content um, what to actually think about before you're creating your content that way it's a seamless process when you're creating your content and showing up online and your audience will be like wow this person is specifically speaking to me so let's jump right into the video <laughs> First thing is first, you have to know where your audience resides. So whether that be Instagram, whether that be TikTok, or Facebook groups, or LinkedIn, or Clubhouse, you want to know where your audience is residing. So you specifically might be more active on Instagram or more active on TikTok, but your audience isn't truly there. So you have to actually understand where your audience resides so that you can go on that specific platform and be forefront to them and really speak to them from that platform. Now, you can create content from any platform and repurpose the content um, along other platforms and sprinkle them along other platforms, but you truly want to be most active on the platform that your audience is most seen um, or resides the most. You have to also specifically know who you're talking to. You can't just generically talk to small business owners. Like what? <laughs> you have to narrow down and you have to get clear on specifically who you're talking to so that you can make content for them and target head on their pain points. So I'm going to read you guys my um, ideal person or my target ideal uh, description so that you can kind of get a feel of when you're creating content you should have one person in mind and I do want to thank my coach I do have a coach her name is she actually has a YouTube channel it's it's Andrea Denise so if you haven't already checked her out go ahead and check her out she's an awesome coach but I wanted to read to you guys what my ideal target person is like how descriptive and how in detail I go so that you know like it's not just Oh, Chicago based small business owner. You want to get very, very specific. So, this is my target person. She is a woman of color between the ages of 25 to 40 that is married or engaged with younger children. So, the younger children will be ages 8 or 9 and under. She is educated and she is in the middle to upper class. She believes in God. She has suffered miscarriages or a miscarriage and finds the strength to move forward and cherish each day. She struggles with a sense of belonging though. She doesn't trust too many people and she only has a handful of friends. And I'm gonna, that was generally the about. So this was, that was generally about my target person. Now I'm gonna go into hobbies, their struggles, what they want to learn or what she wants to learn. Um, so here we go, the hobbies. She likes to travel and go on outings. She's always open to doing outings and she loves documenting these outings with social media. She loves murder mysteries and documentaries and she loves curling up on her couch with a nice glass of wine and binge watching her Netflix series. She's into beauty and fashion, but she doesn't necessarily have a huge fun to splurge the way she wants to. She always researches children's educational activities and loves seeing her children hit their developmental milestones. So that was her hobbies. Going into her struggles, she often finds she often often struggles finding love with her new mom bod, and she often doesn't have time for herself, which leads her to trying to find love and trying to love and learn herself again. 
she often struggles staying consistent due to not knowing what's what the next steps will be she wants to um she wants to get into her hobbies and she wants to start her own business but she feels like she doesn't have the time to do so she wants to learn how to cook she wants to learn how to look and feel she wants to learn how to look and feel great as a new mom she wants to put herself first without the mom guilt or feel like she should be accomplishing her task to do. She wants to be more hands-on with her children's development by doing more activities as a family or Montessori practices. She supports mothers who have also lost children or babies and supports uh, these women. She loves documenting her life. She feels as though every moment should be filmed and saved and she wishes camcorders, VHSs were still a thing. She loves natural hair, but wishes <laughs> she was much better at doing different styles. She loves watching vloggers on YouTube and resonating with their humble beginnings before they started their business or their YouTube venture. So that is my specific target person. So you guys see how niche down and how in my mind when I'm creating content, I have it. I have this particular woman in my mind as I'm creating content. Like I know she's a new mom. I know she's trying to start her business. I know she wants to put herself first. She wants to look and feel great. And that's how I create the content. So when you're creating your content, just specifically have one particular person in mind or jot down, take an afternoon, a night to jot down who you're specifically talking to. All right, so once you have your target audience person narrowed down, you're probably like, okay, well, how do I understand their tr struggles? Like, how do I understand what they're struggling with? Where do I find their pain points? And I'm going to dive deep into how you do that right now. So the first thing you want to do is be a creep. So you want to be a creep and you want to creep on their Instagram and their TikToks mostly as well as Clubhouse. And this is the reason why. So you want to go on Instagram for Reels and TikToks for the TikToks. So what happens is, let's say we're talking about a coach, right? People create content that is going to resonate with other people or that other people will feel connected to or they feel like they're going through the, sim the same thing. So if a coach posts uh, edu educational yet, well, it's not an educational, it's an entertaining reel or a TikTok, but subliminally they are putting in that TikTok or that reel what they're struggling with. So if it's like, oh, if it's a mindset coach and they're like, oh, you, it's a real like, oh, you helping other people with their mindset and it's like cheery, cheery. And then when it comes to your mindset, it's like, you know they feel down or something well, maybe they created a real like that or something. now you know now you know that coach is having some like they are having some issues not issues but they are also running into the problem of their mindset they are also having a little bit of tough time with their mindset as well and maybe you can have a service or a product that can help them through that but be a creep watch their tiktoks watch their reels listen to them on clubhouse on clubhouse oftentimes especially when there's a larger group there's many different people that come on there within that same industry and they speak about their experience they speak about when they first started their business what they were first struggling with and you can use that to create content for the people um, for your audience for the people who are currently struggling with those things so definitely definitely be a creep when it comes to that the next thing is to utilize your stories on instagram and facebook even because facebook has stories as well utilize your stories use the polls use the qu uh, question stickers use the multiple choice stickers use the little slider feature ask them questions regarding their industry or even blatantly ask them hey, which one are you struggling with? And do like a multiple choice so it won't feel like they have to put their struggles into the question box. Give them multiple choices and have them choose and vote what they're struggling with. Once you get the results from that, or if anybody 
votes for anything. Let's say they vote two out of the four um, multiple choice. Make content on two, two of those things. It doesn't have to be necessarily the, the top voted answer, but if it is the top voted answer, make sure you're making content out of it. And then number two, whichever ones they're voting on, make content of that because that is what they're struggling with and that they need help with. And the next thing is to encourage them to conversate with you in their DMs. So if you're, to me, stories are very personable. When you go on your stories, it's very like, um, not so business-like. It's kind of like you're building a connection with them. So make sure you're inviting them into your DMs. Like, hey, whatever you say, uh, let's continue the conversation. If you feel like this too, comment below, like comment on my stories. And that way it takes it to the DM. Or if you're feeling like this, DM me, tell me how you're feeling, tell me how you overcame this. Um, that way you are specifically speaking to the person that is struggling or has a pain point within this topic or whatever you may be talking about. So just ask them, just invite them into your DMs. I mean, if they do it, great. If they don't, that's fine. But you won't know unless you ask. All right, you guys, so those were really my tips on how to create content specifically for your audience. So you want to identify your audience first and then you want to identify their pain points. Once you get that combination, that is going to be killer for when you do your content. That is when you're truly speaking to your audience and you're showing up confidently with that, right? You're showing up confidently. So don't be like me, you guys, at the beginning I was, telling myself I'm a virtual assistant and I'm helping small business owners. Like that was so broad, it was so vague. I didn't have an ideal person in mind. I didn't have an age range, I didn't have a de demographic, I didn't have their hobbies, I didn't have anything. I just said, I want to help small business owners. Don't be like me, <laughs> do not be like me. So if you guys have any questions when it comes around content creation, definitely leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, if this video was helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that every single time I create content for you guys, you guys will get a notification. And if you haven't already checked out my last video, go ahead and go back and check out my last video. It was super helpful and I want to give you guys tips and help you guys <laughs> within your strategies. As you guys can hear, Malix is awake, so I gotta go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.